Hello and welcome again today to Taking Dominion. This is Pastor Terry Shuttlesworth in Virginia Beach, and I'm welcoming you right now to the ministry that God has given us to reach out beyond these four walls, one of the things that we do, and touch people with the gospel of Jesus Christ through the way of television and also by web. I believe that God has an anointing for your life right now that is going to make things better. God has a way of taking us into a purpose that is beyond us and you using us beyond even what we think is our own capacity of learning or, or skills. God will go beyond even your training. God has the ability to move in you and do things in you that nobody else can do. And so today we're going to get into the Word of God. When you hear the Word of God, faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the Word of the living God. And so faith is going to come alive in your heart. We're believing right now. We need people to understand that your life is going to be different because of the life transformation transforming power of the Holy Spirit. You know, the Bible says the Spirit and the Word, they agree. And so when we speak and teach and when we preach the Word of God like we're doing today by way uh, of web and television, God is going to speak to you and something supernatural is going to happen in your life. So come with us now and do a live service and teaching and preaching. And let the anointing of God break every bondage off of your life and bring you into an understanding of greater things. But the Lord showed me something about Jesus and about the tomb. And he showed me the grave clothes. And I went into the scripture and I looked at it. And I saw where the Bible says that the wrapping that had been about his body was in one place. But the handkerchief that had been wrapped around his head was neatly folded and placed apart. Oh my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God began to reveal to me about what I believe God is doing for this place in you. How many know we get in an impartation spiritually here, then we go out and immediately we start working it for God. Building the kingdom. Amen. And that's what church really is. It's not just a fellowship, although there are people and there are things that we fellowship around in the church. But the church is the ecclesia, the called out, the living ones. The ones who are alive in the body. But God showed me his body. I'm getting ready to get to Isaiah 61, but I need you to see something. And it said that he was bound head to foot just like anybody else that would have been placed in a tomb at that time. But that, that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, so we know the Holy Ghost quickened his body and brought him out of those grave clothes. But when they wrap you and when they wrapped him, he had his arms wrapped and they wrapped clear to the neck and above and then they wrapped the head separately. Huh. Glory to God. Glory to God. The clothes that were about his arms, everybody say my authority. Because the arm represents authority and strength in scripture. When he was wrapped about his arms, that means that he, the, the world tried to bind his power and authority. The word of God declares that had the devil known what was going to happen through crucifixion, he would not have crucified him. So he's in the tomb. And the Bible says he's wrapped head to foot, but separately on the head. But he couldn't use his arms to unwrap himself well the bible says very clearly what happened there we need to look into the scripture and see what the scripture shows us he was quickened by the holy ghost and raised from the dead by the holy spirit let me tell you something whether the holy spirit took on some form or not i can tell you right now that the holy spirit unwound him and he freed up his authority so that his arms and his feet, how lovely are the mountains of the feet of them that bring good news, were free. And his hands were free. And his arms were free. How many of you know the Holy Spirit de de 
delivered him from the bondage of the world. There was no sin in the Christ. He was the perfect sacrifice. So everything that God would align would come to him in time and season. If it would have been three days before, it would not have fulfilled prophecy correctly because it prophesied and said, if you destroy this temple in three days, I'll raise it back up again. He already made the declaration that if you try to do something to this body, this body is going to be raised up again in three days. He didn't say on the first day. If he did, he'd have been a liar. Not the second day. He would have missed it. But the third day, he would be raised from the dead. Hallelujah. In the meantime, the Bible says in the book of Peter, he descended into the lower parts of the earth and he set the captives free that were held in Abraham's bosom who had lived righteously under the law. And so he marched them out, took them back to the Father. And then the Bible says on the third day morning, he rose from the dead. First of all, see it. The Spirit of God will come upon you. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. The Bible talks about the Spirit of truth. It says the truth will set you free. When the power of the Holy Ghost comes on you, your freedom comes to you. Your authority is enhanced. The power of God within you begins to rise. Somebody thank God for the anointing. Now there's a couple ways the anointing comes. But God uses his word. Everybody say the word. The word of God is the vehicle that carries faith. It is the expression of God. The revelation of God. So the Bible says that Paul taught and said faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. You're going to get something right now. You're already getting it. What is happening, Pastor? Faith is coming to people. It doesn't mean it matter if you want it or not. It's coming on you because it's in the atmosphere. So I I don't like this very much. I can't wait to leave. Too late. Faith busting a move on you right now. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and tell him it's too late. You've been had. Yeah, faith. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. Can you say amen? Amen. And the word means in hearing and hearing and hearing. God will get you addicted to faith. God will shoot you full of faith. I preached as well in Long Island in the front page of the papers last week for Long Island, New York. It said heroin epidemic. The pastors were telling me it's unbelievable. That heroin is taking over Long Island. It's out of control. Not the Bronx. Long Island. Where everybody acts uppity uppity. Where everybody moved from Brooklyn to the island. Where everybody left the boroughs and went out. and, Huh? But you notice they didn't go that far out because they still got that guarded. Anyway, that's another story. How many know the enemy can't keep the reward of God from you? There's no barrier. There's no line. There's no fence. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. You witness for God, he'll put you in the middle of the Hamptons and mess everybody up out there. Hallelujah. First thing you need to do is clip your hedges so they can see you when you come out the door full of the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. I say glory to God. I say glory to God. I don't know why everybody wants to live out there. They're all hiding behind 12-foot hedges anyway. What do I want? What do you want from God? What is God letting go of? What is God releasing? See, when Jesus had his arms freed then I believe what we're looking at is that he unwrapped the handkerchief that was on his head himself. Because the Bible says that it was neatly folded and put beside the other clothes. Oh, hallelujah. He was sending a message. He was sending a message. 
And the message was that the enemy can't bind you up in your soul. The enemy can't bind you up in your thought process. The enemy can't bind you up. He, he has no power over you. Not only did he defeat him, he, he took from him the keys of death and of hell and the grave. I know it's not Easter, but I feel the authority message in my spirit this morning. And when the Holy Spirit sets you free, it might not feel like freedom, but it's freedom. Freedom will catch up with bondage. Once God removes bondage, he's going to implement freedom. And you're begun. Somebody in here needs to hear me tell you, you need to let the anointing catch up with your past because he forgave you of your past, but now you're going to let him build you and get you on further in the Holy Ghost. I said the Holy Ghost. I don't want a church with a burp and a benediction. I don't want a church where I gotta blow out birthday candles. I don't want a church where I gotta kiss somebody's ring. I want a church that's full of the power of the Holy Ghost. I want somebody in here to understand that we're leaving here full of the power of God and that your mind is free. Your I just wanted to come back to you in the middle of this program and agree with you by faith. You know, you might have saw us in the beginning or have tuned in during the uh, initial part of the beginning of this program, and you don't know what you're watching. Well, you're watching the Word of God being taught and preached in a church here in Virginia Beach, Dominion Christian Center, where God is ministering to families and lives all across this entire state. We even have members that are uh, live in Washington, D.C. and in North Carolina that come here for hours they drive to be in the services. We have service here every Sunday morning at 10 a.m., our main service, and then we also have the first Friday of every month a 7 p.m. miracle service. And so we ask for people to bring the sick, bring people that uh, can't be cured, bring people that are fighting disease. Cancer has been healed out of this ministry and in this house. And so we have a time especially appointed for that, and that is the first Friday night for every month at 7 p.m. Also, we have a uh, midweek services every Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock. So there's something for everyone, but the TV ministry and what we're doing now before we go back into the teaching is an outreach where we're connecting with you. And so at the end of this broadcast, in just a few minutes, we're going to be agreeing with you in prayer. I want you to come back now with me live into a service and hear the word of God and allow your faith to be built up in God. I'll see you in just a few moments. Now, the preaching of the gospel, everybody say the gospel. How many know gospel means good news? You should hear good news when you're in church. Good tidings. Hallelujah. So the gospel is not bad tidings. We just need to pray because severe judgment is upon the earth. We're all in a famine. Everyone is susceptible to it. Nobody can be delivered from it. There's no future. You might not get a job. What if you don't get a job? You, you're not going to make it. God is not going to come through for you. But we're all going to huddle here in this. What is this? The diary of Anne Frank? No, sir. I said, no, sir. Even in the Old Testament, the Bible says that Isaac sowed in the land where there was a famine, and in one year he reaped 100 fold. <laughs> Glory to God. Everybody say, Thank God. He's laid his hand on me and anointed me and will raise me up above my fellows. Now you can't say, Well, what about everybody else? Nobody else is going to be blessed if you don't take advantage of the blessing when they don't want the blessing. So what happens? We, the people are not, we live in a country right now, the United States of America, where over one out of two people don't even believe in a literal heaven and a literal hell. We're at that point where, where it's splitting right at 50% to 51, 52%, where people don't even believe that Jesus is the Son of God and they don't believe in a real devil. Now that's the polls. So you're at one out of two. That people that believe in heaven and say it's a real place. Hell, that it's a real place. Well, first of all, you need to know hell was not created for you or me. 
But that hell was created as a penalty for the devil and the fallen angels. It was not created for humankind. So God didn't create hell so that there'd be a place that we could choose and go. No, no, no. Actually, there was no way. And that if they did not live unrighteous under the law, see, then they were going to pay the penalty. God made it better by sending Jesus. Say, listen, not only do I not want them in hell, I'm going to make it easier for them to get to heaven. Because it is my will that they make it here with me and live here eternally with me. So what are we going to do? My Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies your footstool. And so he sends Jesus in the course of time. And as it would be, he would come, split time in half. They don't want to do it anymore, but it is still Anno Domini, which is after Christ. If you see the split in time, the paradigm shift of what happened in the earth between time, seasons, and purpose. When Jesus was born, at that moment, he stopped the clock and restarted it again. Somebody thank God that there's still a B.C. and there's still an after. Hallelujah. When Christ comes, how many of you know he stopped your clock? He turns sin back and he turns you on to a divine future. And now, because of the birth of Jesus Christ, the death of Jesus Christ, the burial of Jesus Christ, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the ascension of Jesus Christ, that clock is in your favor. It's moving your way now. You're going forward, not back. You're getting ready for a miracle right now if you'll agree with the word of faith right now something's gonna happen right now lift your hands and take the word into your spirit the devil doesn't like preaching like this Go to a show, I don't like that. Can't hear, turn it up. Somebody goes to a concert, they got speakers stacked, man. Turn it up. Go down to the beach, they got something going down there. I wish they'd turn this thing up, I can't hear it. Go to church, why does he have to talk so loud? <laughs> Turn to your neighbor and tell him, forgive me, Jesus. <laughs> Come on, somebody. You want to go to the theater that has Dolby Digital. You want Steven Spielberg to come flying out. <laughs> go to church. Why is he half preach like that? He's getting all sweaty. I'm working on a building. I'm working on a supernatural building. Oh, don't think I'm talking about another church somewhere. God will have his way when he has his way. I'm talking about the body of Christ. Do you know last year in Paris, we had a revival there? That if you call and talk to the pastors, and some of them are coming over, they were supposed to be here Christmas time, they couldn't make it because of the weather in Montreal, they got stuck there. But when they come, they'll tell you. We had a revival there last year where more pastors showed up to that revival than any revival in the history of Paris. Pastors. Now, when you get pastors together, something's going on. Huh? I don't mean we gave them a free meal. They came to revival. Over 120 some pastors showed up in two and a half weeks. We were supposed to be there five days. That was just the pastors. The building that we were in was, was jammed on top and in the bottom. They had to run audio and visual from the sanctuary down below. And when I gave the altar call, people came up from the basement for weeks on end. And it was still going, but God told me, stop. So I came home. There's a revival in the world. 
Don't let anything fool you. You've got to keep your eyes set on what God promised. Everybody say, I'm going to have double for my trouble. Say it again. I'm going to have double for my trouble. Went to Nigeria, went into the TV studio that I had just built. He said, I want you to, to tape two shows. We're going in there. He's built hospital. He's built uh, orphanage. He's built, he has his own banks now. He's got things going on. It doesn't just come. You got to do something to do that. I mean, when you got 35 people a session in your church and in the middle of Nigeria in a stadium built a concrete... That's, that's, that's the size of uh, bigger than the scope. You did something to do that. You called something out of somewhere. It didn't just happen because you have a good personality. The anointing breaks the yoke. You know, so when you got 50,000 people in two services showing up to church every Sunday morning, something's going on. That's more than flesh. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I hadn't seen him in a while, and I went into the studio. It was packed full of people. There was hardly a seat in the studio. I forget what night it was, but it was an off night. We're tape taping television, and, and I'm doing a, a telethon in Nigeria that's going to go off on the ABN network. So uh, I got a word from the Lord about the wind and so forth. But man, when the anointing came in, boom, it hits the studio. Look, when a Nigerian gets the Holy Ghost on them and starts praising God, they ain't stopping for a while. Hallelujah. Sister Helen's telling them to stop the cameras. Why? Because she's not going to stop the praise. She's not going to stop the anointing in the room. That room went from air conditioned to hot because people were dancing and shouting and praising God. Why? Because of the anointing that came into the anointing will go anywhere. The lights were off. Cameras were on. But hallelujah had to stop the process because the people of God could feel the anointing vibrating, setting them free. Come on. Sometimes you don't realize it, but your arms have been bound by something that happened in your life and you feel like how am I going to get out of this well you came to the right place today because not only are you getting out of it God is going to strengthen your arms and God is going to send you forth somebody shout I can feel it I can feel it something came against you and set you back but today there is a word in the Holy Ghost that is setting you set back back and is turning you on to the of the reality of the Holy Ghost. Welcome back. I told you, you and I need to connect right now at the end of this broadcast. God has a place, a point of contact. The Word of God says that many times Jesus Christ would bring something out before the one that he was ministering to and tell them that if they came into agreement with him in a specific area that he would then do something for them or a point of contact that came for a miracle uh, like the, the bread and the fish and, and, and other things where Jesus said if thou canst believe you know all things are possible if, if you can believe and he told the man uh, do you believe and he said Lord I believe but help my unbelief and so Jesus will always give you something to contact or connect with in your faith when he does that that is his ability to reach down to you and say, I'm going to put something supernatural in your life. All you have to do is see me in a different way or believe me at a higher level. He told that to Abraham when he came to him with a covenant of promise and said, Abraham, not only am I going to bless you, but I'm going to multiply you like the stars of the heavens and the sands of the sea. He told him, Abraham, he said, look up into the heavens and count the stars and see if you be able to number them. He said, so shall thy descendants be. He gave Abraham a point of contact. He gave him a different view and how things could be for him. Sometimes God will put something in your life that will open you up to greatness and will bring you into a greater unlimited area so that you can expand and break out of whatever it is that's been limiting you or troubling you. And that is the greatest part of deliverance is when God comes and gives us an out and the out that God gives us is greater than anything we could even imagine. 
I'm agreeing with you right now. I'm asking you to pray with me and say this. Say, Jesus, save me from all my sin and cleanse me from my unrighteousness and fill me with your precious Holy Spirit right now. Take all my sin from me and fill me with a new life and a new spirit. And I thank you for that. If you prayed that prayer, I want you to contact us, 757-467-2400, or go to the web at dominionchristiancenter.com. You can connect with us by Facebook and Twitter, and ad will come up at the end of the program for that. But I'm believing right now that you got saved. Let us know so that we can follow up and talk to you. We have people here that are concerned and want to pray with you. Also, I want to pray right now for those of you that are sick. I feel the anointing of God on me to cast that sickness from your body. You might be watching in a hospital or laying in a bed in your house. I command you to be well now. In the name of Jesus, I loose the power of God to set you free. Right now, I want you to be free. Call us, contact us. All the information is there for you. Right now, I want you to know that faith is defining your destiny. I'll see you again next week. It is important that you and I connect. This is Pastor Terry, and I'm telling you that we have ways that you can connect to us through the social media. You need to go to dominionchristiancenter.com. That's dominionchristiancenter.com, and take advantage of some of these things that we provide. There's live teaching on the web there. Also, you can send in your prayer requests, and we're going to agree with you in prayer. We take those before the Lord uh, every month in our miracle service. Also, I want to just explain for some of you, maybe older viewers that aren't on Twitter, it's a free account. You can access it and set it up easily. And it's just small fragments of things that we send out by the day, uh, throughout the day uh, to our partners and friends. And so Twitter and Facebook, all this is going to be made available to you. And don't forget DominionChristianCenter.com. We're believing in covenant with you in agreement that we're going to come into a place together where we're going to see mighty miracles in God as you and I connect together and stay connected by relationship. I love you and I appreciate you taking this time. When you fast, it doesn't give you power over the thing. It separates you from the thing. And when your separation comes from the thing, then your connectivity comes with God. So, and the Lord spoke to my spirit and he said, if you fast finances, then you won't be able to just spend what I've called you to give. Jesus came to set us free from curses. So the devil's trying to get us wrapped up in curses again, but we're not going there. Not only are we not going to get wrapped up in them, but we're going to break curses off of other people. Call now to receive your copy of Fasting Your Finances for only $39.95. You will receive two powerful DVDs and two CDs that will show you how to effectively break the curse of the enemy off of your finances. To order, call 757-467-2400 or order online at dominionchristiancenter.com.